Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We join with those that are in hospitals and nursing centers and the homebound, and all who are praying this Mass by means of television. We join together as a people of faith. And our readings today from Scripture remind us that we are called to embrace wisdom, that we are to be, by the example of our lives and how we choose to live, a people of hope. And as the gospel reminds us as well, we are to be a people of faith, awake, ready, prepared for the coming of the Lord. But sometimes we fall on our journey and we sin, and so we ask God to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of the Savior of our virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers, to pray for me, Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds seeking those worthy of her and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flask of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for you and us. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. If there's a theme in the month of November in terms of our liturgical calendar, 
in which we don't often have a theme every month, November's a little different. If there was that theme, I would say it would be about staying awake. In the month of November, we began the very month itself remembering all saints. And then November 2nd, we went into remembering all the faithful departed on All Souls Day. And throughout the month of November, as we prepare to enter into Advent, we hear these gospel passages about the end of time, about the necessity as followers of Jesus to stay awake, to be prepared, for we know neither the day nor the hour, which calls into question, then how do we do that? And what about those that have already died? Those who are asleep? All of these questions was on the mind of the early Christians. We hear in the book, that, or the letter that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians about the importance of being able to understand what it means to trust in the mercy and the love of Jesus. As an early Christian community, the Thessalonians believed that Jesus was coming back very, very soon. And so when people in their families and other members of the Christian community were dying, they had every right to wonder, then what happens when the Lord comes to those that have already died? And so Paul addresses this concern, and he says, do, we do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. So first... Paul is reminding them that we are called to be, as followers of Jesus, a people of hope. To know that we grieve, we, we mourn the loss of our loved ones. In the month of November, we think about our relatives and friends who have died. Maybe they died a long time ago, but yet we miss them. And in November, in a special way, we pray for their souls, and we remember all of those wonderful times and experiences that we had with them. But Paul says to the community and to us, but we grieve certainly, we miss our loved ones, but we grieve as Christians with a sense of hope, not like all the rest who believe that there is nothing beyond this world. And Paul will go on and write, he says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so will God through Jesus bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. So Paul gives us that reason in the name of Christ to be a hope-filled people. He says, when the Lord comes again, he says, those who are living will recognize that the first to rise will be those who have died. And then those who are alive, who are left, that we will join with them in that final resurrection, and we will meet them, St. Paul says, in the clouds. And we will be together forever with our loving God. Thus we shall always be with the Lord, he writes, Therefore, console one another with these words. In November, in these readings that we hear about staying awake, we are, reminding, are reminded of our call of how we do that. The first reading from Wisdom says, we are to be a people that seek wisdom above all else, that resplendent gift in virtue that God shares with us. Wisdom is not merely the acquiring of knowledge. Knowledge is different than wisdom. Some people can be very knowledgeable, but perhaps not always be very wise. Those who are wise doesn't mean that they necessarily have a lot of college degrees. It's about that knowledge that we all seek, and it's important to have knowledge, to know things. We want to know the Word of God to have the knowledge of that word, to have the knowledge about our faith, but the wisdom that we seek is to be able to practice it, to live it. Someone once said that true wisdom comes through suffering, not through knowledge. 
So all of us who have ever experienced those sorrowful times, those challenging times, and we all, I would venture to say, have had those experiences and will continue to have them. We are not exempt as followers of Jesus from the world's sufferings. But those sufferings have meaning. Scripture reminds us that suffering brings us the wisdom that we need so that we can be able to make the decision every day to follow Christ. So that we can be like not the foolish virgins, but the wise ones in the gospel today. They were wise not because they had more knowledge than the others. They were wise because they were always prepared. They brought with them not only their lamps to wait for the coming of the bridegroom, they brought with them extra oil. The foolish ones brought their lamps as well, but they didn't bring any extra oil. They thought the bridegroom would come quickly, but the bridegroom was delayed, and in that d delaying his coming, they fell asleep. And when the bridegroom came and they were ready to knock on that door for the bridegroom to open to them, to enter into the wedding feast, they weren't prepared. Now it would seem when we do a first reading of that gospel passage, how unchristian, how unfair for the wise ones not to share what they had with the foolish ones that didn't bring enough oil. It's not about a lack of charity. That understanding in Scripture is that the oil symbolizes for us of what we ourselves have to do every day in preparing for the Lord, something that no one can give to us. For in that final judgment, it is we who will appear before the Lord, according to the Bible, according to God, that we will appear before God and no one will be able to speak on our behalf. It is we who will speak. It will be we who will testify to our life as to how we live that life according to our belief in God. A parent won't speak for a child. A child can't be a substitute for the parent. A good friend can't say, well, let me talk for him. It doesn't work that way. It is we who will have to be prepared by having that oil ready so that when the bridegroom arrives, we will be prepared to light that path and to say to the Lord, I have done my best. I have tried to be faithful. As Paul would say, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. No one can speak for us in final judgment. Jesus is saying to us, if we want the door open to us, then we have to be prepared when the bridegroom comes, when he returns, and no one can help us in that preparation. It's the decisions that we make, make every single day and how we live our faith and how we live out our marriage and how we live out our Christianity to each other, how we live the virtues, how we seek to be Christ for one another. So that when the Lord comes, when that bri our bridegroom arrives, we will be prepared like the wise ones. We will be the ones that through suffering who have learned that we acquire that wisdom, not by knowledge, but by how we live our life every day through the good times and the bad times, through the suffering and through the challenges, that in the midst of all of, that we, of what we go through, we stand with Christ, firm in the Lord, firm in our faith, choosing Christ to help us through those difficult times and to celebrate the joy-filled ones of life. In the end, that means we acquire wisdom. And in that way, we stay awake as Jesus instructs us, for we know not the day nor the hour. As Christians, we want Jesus to come again, but as Christians, we want to be prepared for that coming. We say it every time we gather for a Sunday liturgy for Mass and on other days as well. We say that in our creed. We say it in that realization that we await the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is such an important understanding that it is our creed, it is our belief that we will experience that resurrection and those who have gone before us will rise along with those who are living and we will stand before the judgment seat of God. Jesus says, don't be afraid. Be prepared. You see, that's the difference. 
We live in fear that the Lord's coming, or we live in the expectation and the joy that he will arrive one day, and we are prepared to meet him. Let us be like the wise virgins who come ready with the extra oil, not the foolish ones who aren't prepared. The world will not prepare us. We have to go beyond of what the world offers to us and embrace what only God gives so that when all comes to that final consummation, we stand like the wise virgins going through that door to eternal glory, ready, open for us into the wedding feast that Jesus has prepared. Looking forward to the resurrection of the dead and the eternal life to come, we profess what we believe as followers of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of Jesus gives to us, and we ask the Lord to help us by answering our prayers. For the church, that in order to prepare ourselves for the end times, we may hasten our work to build up the kingdom of God in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord for world leaders, May they seek wisdom to guide their decisions and policies, making their nations and the world more just, more virtuous, and more peaceful. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the pandemic, for the sick and the suffering, and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us, especially during the month of November, May we remember them and find comfort in our generous and merciful God. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed and for the repose of the soul of Otto Schultz and Mary Sisa, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, we live in the hope and the expectation that your son Jesus will come again at the end of time. Father, we stand 
with you in your love, asking you for the strength to live our faith each day, to always be prepared, to be like those wise virgins, always ready to welcome the bridegroom. We ask, Father, that you answer these intentions according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, 
on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by pouring forth your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks.